Teacher Instructor Joy. Today we're going to talk about big shifting. How do we make sure when you have to jump big time that you're always absolutely in tune with a beautiful sound? Sometimes it happens in a concerto piece, sometimes in orchestra acts or whatever we do, it happens more than often that you have to jump big, meaning from the first position to the high position, and then often it's very hard to make sure to be um, in tune reliably. How do we do that? So I'm going to tell you how to do it, all about it. Number one, if you have a choice to avoid big jump, do it. Meaning, I will use a little excerpt, um, Brahms Symphony Number no. 2, first violin part, there's something like this. or different mood in the hole that will make you nervous. So you want everything absolutely more the safest way. So what I did was, so I was already in the third position. Well now I'm in the fifth position. I climbed it little by little. Third, fourth. I climbed little by little. So I know I'll be playing some at some time this E. So instead of going from the first, what I did was I used same E note, but same position on G string. That way, I just have to go to the E string, and I'm in tune. So I don't have to worry about, oops, am I going to be landing on the right note or not? Because beforehand, little by little, I went up. Make sure I already have the note, which will be coming the third next note, and then I play the note using high position note in the lower string, and that way I will secure my upper high jumping note is always in tune. Therefore, I can make it even better sounding, even more secure, and beautiful sound. And sometimes we don't have choice of climbing up. Be ready. Sometimes we have to do big jump. Then what do we do that? In that case, you want to just practice calmly. So I will use the um, same um, piece from Second Symphony and First Violin Part. It's something like this. Um, you see that? So here, I have to just, I have to just go from first, I don't know, if fifth, sixth, some position. So it's quite a bit high, as you can see. Number one, don't keep playing in performance tempo and performance bowing. Just playing over and over in performance way is gonna make it worse. I know it's very tempting, be strong, don't do that. Just take a moment to take it easy and slow by simply reading slurred and focus on complete relaxation on your bow and you're left and shifting, like this. So you see, even though in the performance it's very fast shifting, I don't go like that, but I go slowly. That way you understand the distance from where, from where to where. Then, once you've done this exercise enough, you can also alternate with a separate bow at the tip. When you do a separate bow, it is very important for you to make sure there's no extra weight or accented bow because 
by nature, when we have to do unusual movements, such as a big shifting, our body thinks, okay, go for it, push. So we tend to, we tend to push it, which actually make yourself, your body more tense. Therefore, you will be more out of tune. So you want to avoid that. So now, when you go complete relaxed bow, especially down bow, you have to make sure that the bow is completely relaxed. That's number one. Number two, your left hand shifting goes before your right hand. So meaning, your, your hand is already there before you go right hand. As an exercise, you can do uh, a little slurred one like that multiple times so that you train your hand left hand to go before your right hand it's all right like that so you would spend this alternating slurred separate bow separate bow with slur just that shifting part enough times it differs from one player to the next some players just need a couple times of trial. Some players need like seven weeks of practicing patiently. You have to see, you have to be able to feel that you feel secure enough, you're landing it comfortably enough. Then move on to the performance. When you feel like you know the notes, you, you feel like your left hand knows how the big the shifting should be. Then what you do is you do performance practicing, but don't play from beginning to the end. You just take a couple notes before the shifting and then on the landing note, right after the shifting, make sure you land on the note so that you should be able to play nice and vibrated and relaxed bowing, like this. Now, you will do a couple more times until you, your landing note is nice and beautiful, in tune and resonant. And trust me, this is a very effective um, way of practicing. It, it solves almost 99% all this big shifting problem. And you will see with a patient work, this will pay off and people will amaze how reliably, how in tune, how beautiful you can play. Happy playing, bye.